Have you heard the good news? Jamaica's economy is doing well, 17 consecutive quarters of growth. Plus, unemployment is at the lowest level in the nation's history. That means more job opportunities for more Jamaicans. Let's work hard to continue to make this island a place for all of us. Hi there, this is Jamaica Magazine, the show with the information you need to know. Of the spread today, we'll tell you how to keep your body right with the proper nutrients to ward off illnesses. Plus, it is summer. Jump into the pool with a water sport. I'm Adrian Atkinson, your guide as we turn the pages. Stay with us. There's much to know and learn. Water is precious. So we encourage everyone to practice the four R's of water conservation. Always remember to reduce your use of water wherever possible. Replace water wasting devices with water savings devices. Reuse water wherever possible. And wherever leaks are found, please repair them and repair them quickly. Don't delay. Practice the four R's of water conservation today. Good day, I'm Stephen McHugh and this is your JIS News for Tuesday, July 9. In an effort to dismantle criminal gangs, the government will be seeking Parliament's approval to amend several pieces of legislation. National Security Minister Dr. Horace Chang says this is necessary to aid the police in capturing gang leaders and break up their illegal enterprises. In the anti-gang legislation, we'll have its final, uh, two or three final sittings to look at various amendments until we get to those sittings. In fact, we are bringing to the House amendments to intercept Act to provide the security forces with an effective means of using modern technology to gather evidence in dealing with the criminal enterprises, the gangs, their dons, and bring together of guns in the country. Minister Chang was speaking at a press conference on Sunday where Prime Minister Andrew Holness declared a state of public emergency in the South St. Andrew Police Division. Dr. Chang reiterated that the major organized crime and anti-corruption agency, MOCA, would be operationalized this year. The Code of Conduct regulations for MOCA is expected to go before Parliament shortly. The government is committed to a long-term solution that will dismantle the gangs, prevent recruitment into the gangs, provide opportunities for young people, and ensure we have a police force that is properly equipped to deal with the modern criminal enterprises. MOCA currently has approximately 330 cases before the court. Local Government Minister Desmond McKenzie is to meet with the Police High Command to discuss specific measures to protect municipal officers. Minister McKenzie wrote to Police Commissioner Major General Anthony Anderson last week in the wake of attacks on staff members of the municipal corporations. A security guard employed to the St. Anne Municipal Corporation, Jermaine Jones, was shot in the neck in the parish's transport center after reportedly resisting a gunman's demands to hand over cash collected from operators. In another incident, an employee of the St. Catherine Municipal Corporation was left with severe facial injuries after an altercation with a driver at the King Street bus park in Spanish Town. Mr. McKenzie has condemned the attacks, saying he's appalled at the violence that the country's municipal officers have been experiencing as they perform their duties. The minister adds that he's particularly concerned that these incidents are not isolated, but appear to be a part of a pattern of assault against the public order and revenue collection functions of the corporations. He has encouraged the employees of municipal corporations and the municipal police in particular to maintain their spirits through these challenges. A tripartite agreement was signed on Monday to implement a cannabis pilot program in a compound St. Elizabeth. The agreement was signed by representatives of the Cannabis Licensing Authority, CLA, a compound town maroons, and Timeless Herbal Care. It will be facilitated under the CLA's Alternative Development Project, which is being implemented as a strategy to transition traditional cannabis farmers from a prohibited framework into the regulated environment. It is also aimed at providing access to quality-controlled cannabis for medicinal purposes in keeping with government's policy. Agriculture Minister Audley Shaw says this will ensure that traditional growers of marijuana are not left out of the formal cannabis system. We are putting together a system 
for those who want to become formally involved in the, the growing of, of medicinal cannabis, uh, that there is that system available to them, to small farmers. This is what it's about. We are, we are therefore putting together this pilot um, project and we are here for the signing of the first of two major pilot projects. One is being done in the, uh, in the Akompong uh, community of St. Elizabeth. The second one is being, will be done uh, in Orange Hill in Westmoreland. Prime Minister Andrew Holness is expected to officially launch the Alternative Development Project later this year. The Comprehensive Health Center on Slightpen Road in Kingston is to benefit from a $6 million upgrade to its services and maintenance of the facility. Rainforest Seafoods committed the funds at a recent MOU signing for the official adoption of the health center for the next three years. This is part of the government's Adopt-A-Clinic initiative. The Slypen Road facility is the 14th to become adopted under the initiative, which encourages Jamaicans at home and abroad to assist community health centers. Partnerships in public health are absolutely fundamental, and I, and, and I want to make it clear as a standard bearer at the policy level that we welcome, we endorse, we embrace, and we encourage partnerships as long as it subscribes to the fundamental best practices of public health. General Manager at Rainforest Seafoods, Jerome Miles, says that the partnership is a fitting match. It's a wonderful initiative. We think that public-private partnerships are critical to the development of the country and, our, and in particular the healthcare in sector. And we want to be part of making the healthcare sector one of the best in the region and certainly this clinic the best in Jamaica. Rainforest Seafoods has already spent nearly $2 million towards improving the facility, including roof repairs, seating, and a new television set in the maternal and child health waiting area. Other medical equipment, including blood pressure machines and digital scales, have also been donated, along with wheelchairs. The government has earmarked 100 health centers for adoption under its Adopt-A-Clinic program, which was launched in 2017. And finally, government is seeking to partner with an international private entity to manage operations at the Ian Fleming International Airport in St. Mary. The airport is located at Boscobel in close proximity to major resort towns, and Transport Minister Robert Montague says outsourcing could maximize the airport's commercial viability. As such, discussions are being held with representatives of an organization that operates the airport in the Turks and Caicos Islands. We want to develop this airport into a community airport, into our airport. And we are negotiating with an operator to come and take over aspects of the operations because government is not the best suited person to run anything. In the meantime, he says work is to begin during the current fiscal year to construct a new police post at the airport, which provides domestic flight services as well as connections to the United States and the Caribbean. Mr. Montague was speaking during the recent launch of domestic flight service at the Ian Fleming Airport by Jam Airlink Express. And that's it for GIS News Today. I'm Stephen McHugh. Thanks for watching. I'm deeply concerned by the number of Jamaicans killed on our roads. Safety on our roads is our responsibility. Jamaicans, drivers, passengers, motorcyclists, and pedestrians, slow down. Observe the rules of the road. Be courteous. Drive defensively. Be considerate. Buckle up. Wear a helmet. The careless overtaker is only rushing to the undertaker. Not observing the rules of the road could cost you your life and that of your loved ones. I encourage all road users to take special care as we use public thoroughfares. The life you save may be your own. Remember, your family wants you to arrive alive. Our next, the latest happenings out of the office of the Prime Minister.
St Andrews South Police Division declared latest state of public emergency. Prime Minister attends CARICOM 40. And Jamaica signs MOU with CARICOM Secretariat. You're watching Jamaica House Weekly. I'm Anthony Morgan. After careful consideration and review of the current crime situation, His Excellency the Governor General has declared a state of public emergency for the Police Division of St. Andrew South. That was Prime Minister Andrew Holness on Sunday announcing the latest section of the island to be placed under the enhanced security measure. Areas covered under the operation include Doheny Park, Uenden, Ferry, Greenwich Town, Seaview Gardens, Waterhouse, Olympic Gardens and Maxfield Park. Police statistics suggest that since the start of 2019, the division has recorded 94 murders and 98 shootings, the highest among police divisions on the island. That's also 33% more than the 72 murders recorded in the Clarendon Police Division, which has the second highest number of murders. Violence is at epidemic proportions in Jamaica. It ought to be treated in the same way as we would treat any other epidemic, which is to put in place special measures to arrest it. The main cause of violent death in Jamaica would be the category or would be guns, gangs and guns or deaths related to criminal activities. Up to Monday morning, officers from the K-9 division, with help from a firearm detection dog named Trigger, had recovered an assault rifle in St. Andrews South. Persons are being encouraged to share information with the security forces at 311 or 876-837-8888. Prime Minister Andrew Holness spent most of last week in St. Lucia for the 40th regular meeting of the heads of government of the Caribbean community. During the July 3-5 meeting, CARICOM leaders discussed several issues including funding the single market and economy, regional security, Venezuela, blacklisting, small island developing states and disaster resilience building. Mr. Holness also held bilateral talks with the Prime Minister of Norway, Erna Solberg. The two spoke of their respective economies, tourism and institutional reform. On the margins of CARICOM 40, Jamaica signed a Memorandum of Understanding with the CARICOM Secretariat. The agreement covers the provision of support for operationalizing and institutionalizing Phase 2 of the CARICOM results-based management RBM system. It's expected that the CARICOM RBM will develop a more results-oriented culture within the CARICOM community. The CARICOM RBM will be conducted through a series of sensitization seminars, assistance to develop an information technology platform, and information from Jamaica on implementing best practices. This will result in the development of a CARICOM RBM policy. And while in St. Lucia, Mr. Holness held bilateral talks with United Nations Secretary General Antonio Guterres. The Prime Minister used Thursday's meeting to update the UN Secretary General on actions Jamaica has taken under the UN's Climate Action Initiative. As co-chair of the initiative, Mr. Holness recommitted Jamaica to strategically raising awareness on climate resilience and funding. He also pledged to help raise $100 billion for global climate action and increase private sector involvement in climate smart programs. Prime Minister Andrew Holness used his last day in St. Lucia to meet with members of the Jamaican diaspora on that island. He spoke with them on a plethora of issues including the economy, labour, investment, tourism, crime and the brain drain. So this government is about creating opportunities at home to bring back the brain power of the country. Before his attendance at CARICOM 40, Prime Minister Andrew Holness welcomed reggae icon Toot Sibert to his office on Tuesday. The two spoke of the evolution and future of reggae music, after which Mr. Holness was presented with two of Hibbert's albums. Tuesday also saw Mr. Holness having discussions with representatives from the Ministry of Economic Growth and Job Creation, including Minister Darrell Vaz. The group spoke about developments in Discovery Bay and its environs. On Sunday, Prime Minister Andrew Holness expressed great sadness upon learning of the passing of Ambassador Eleanor Felix. Ambassador Felix was the former Chief of State Protocol in the Office of the Prime Minister and former Ambassador to Cuba. 
The late ambassador was also former director of protocol at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Foreign Trade. Mr. Honus recalled Ambassador Felix as a woman who inspired with her strength and outlook on life. The Prime Minister said Jamaica would miss Ambassador Felix, who he described as a civil servant of the highest order, who had a professional, warm and engaging spirit. And that's how we close out Jamaica House Weekly. Be sure to join us next time for more news stories coming out of the office of the Prime Minister. Now more than ever, when the heat is on, we must ensure that our bodies are getting the required amount of vitamins and minerals to withstand these hot days. Next, good food for optimum performance. Eating healthy by having a balanced diet consisting of items from all the food groups and consuming the right portions is important to get the nutrients vital for disease prevention, growth and good health. Essential nutrients are building blocks for the cells that make up the body, from bone to muscle, skin and hair. One of the most critical ones is protein, which is made up of different amino acids, some of which the body can make on its own. We need a variety of proteins to function properly, many of which can only come from the foods we eat. Meats, fish and eggs are essential sources from animals, while plant sources include beans, nuts and some grains. How much protein you need daily depends on a variety of factors, including how active you are and your age. Carbohydrates are the main nutrients for fueling the body's energy needs, especially our central nervous system and brain. They help protect against diseases, but some carbohydrates are healthier than others. Some healthy sources include your fresh produce, such as yam, banana, breadfruit and tubers, as well as whole grains, fiber-rich vegetables and fruits. Less healthy sources include refined grains and products with added sugar. Fats often get a bad rap, but it's important to know that healthy fats are essential to our body's function. Fats aid in vitamin and mineral absorption, blood clotting, building cells and muscle movement. Fats are high in calories, which is a measure of energy from foods, but the World Health Organization recommends keeping daily calorie intake from fat at under 30% including healthy fats which are the unsaturated fats in your diet can help balance blood sugar decrease the risk of heart disease and type 2 diabetes and improve brain function healthy fats are also powerful anti-inflammatories and can lower the risk for arthritis cancer and alzheimer's disease some of the well-known unsaturated fats are the omega-3 and omega-6 fatty acids Sources of these healthy fats include fish, seeds, nuts and vegetable oils, olive, avocado and flax seeds. Trans fats are to be avoided and we should also limit our intake of saturated fats, of which the main sources are animal-based and include butter, cheese, red meat and ice cream. Vitamins are organic compounds essential for normal growth and are required in small quantities. There are 13 essential vitamins that the body needs and these help lower the risk of diseases such as lung and prostate cancer. Vitamin A supports healthy vision, skin and bones. Powerful antioxidants like vitamin C boost the immune system and helps the body heal. Eating a varied and well-balanced diet of fruits and vegetables should supply the body with the required vitamins. Minerals are also important nutrients needed for building strong bones and teeth. They help with regulating our body's metabolism and keeping us properly hydrated. The mineral calcium strengthens bones and teeth and helps with nerve signal transmission. It also helps to maintain healthy blood pressure 
and with muscle contraction and relaxation. Iron supports red blood cells and hormone creation, while the mineral zinc boosts the immune system and wound healing. The body also needs water, which improves brain function and mood, and acts as a shock absorber and lubricant in the body. Water also flushes our toxins, carries nutrients to cells, hydrates the body, and prevents constipation. Even mild dehydration can make us feel tired and impair concentration and physical performance. In addition to drinking water, we can hydrate ourselves by eating fruits and vegetables such as spinach and watermelon. Start treating your body right. As you grab your next meal, make sure you're getting all the nutrients needed in their right proportion. Hey there, so did you know that plastic bags were introduced to supermarkets in 1977? The production of plastic bags are toxic to the environment as the process involves the use of petroleum, natural gas and other chemicals. 160,000 plastic bags are used globally every second and 5 trillion are produced yearly. Side by side, they can encircle the world seven times. Plastic degrades after 700 years and will only fully degrade in 1,000. This means that all the plastic that has ever been produced has not degraded. It remains toxic even after it breaks down. 13 million metric tons of plastic end up in the ocean every year and at least 800 species worldwide are affected by marine debris of which 80% is plastic and is mistaken for food by turtles, fish and other marine life. Research has shown that fish caught for human consumption contain plastic nanoparticles. An average family will use 60 plastic bags on four visits to the supermarket and only 1 to 3% are recycled worldwide. Play your part in advancing your welfare and that of the earth. Support the ban on plastic. Reduce, reuse, recycle, and get eco-friendly bags for you and your 1877. To beat the heat this summer, consider enrolling in a water sport program. There are several classes available, and they are not only for children. There are evening and weekend classes in swimming as well as sailing. Tertiary institutions like CMU, UWI, and even YMCA offer these classes. Next, we get you water ready with the Aquatic Girls. I didn't start it here in Jamaica, it was, it was started before me. I think when I started, when I came here, it was one, two clubs, I would say two clubs in Kingston. So I started it here in Port Antonio. Ten years ago, it wasn't a team, it was one swimmer only for a couple of years. And, uh, and then kids started joining more and more, started joining, and here's the team. Five, four, three, two, one. I love synchronized swimming. Because of the pretty swimsuits, I wanted to show off myself to other countries. The reason why I'm doing synchronized swimming is because when I was younger, there's not really a lot of sports that was there, and I also love water. Synchronized swimming is a very unique sport. It's different from everything else, and I like to stand out. It's a tough experience, it's challenging in many cases. I like the fact that you know, um, we get to go out a lot. We get to get exposed to different things, different um, cultures and stuff. We really don't select the goals. We, we take everybody who comes and we give them a chance and then we'll see who stays. Synchronized swimming is, is not the sport that you can do twice a week for one hour. It's, it's, you have to, it's very complicated sport that you have to do as, as speed swimming. You have to be very good at speed swimming. You have to be very good at gymnastics. You have to do a ballet class sometimes. And, uh, and of course, synchronized swimming actually on land and in the pool. 
up there, don't turn, and then you walk out the So the girl is practicing four times a week, sometimes five, and uh, depending on the school schedule, of course. The level of dedication is about, saying one to ten, it is about eight. Because it's not a lot of sports that's around that I can do. So doing synchrono, it takes a lot of time to think about the things that you're going to do. Have about a duet and a solo. When it comes on to shows, it has about 12 different routines. It's very hard to balance school and training because um, most of the times training um, finishes late at night. So I will have to get home and um, sometimes study and so I go to bed late and um, it's kind of hard to wake up in the mornings. <laughs> this leg is great, this one is about it. Synchronized swimming help you with, with development. It develops you physically and mentally too. I think the, the best uh, advantage that they get being a swimmer is that they get in confidence. Knowing that you achieved something and you did something that many people cannot do, it gives you confidence and self-respect, and this is what the girls really need. In the last few years, I've grown to the sports because when I was younger, I had my coach repeatedly saying, Shari work, Shari work, Shari work. And the, I think before I reached about 16, or 15, I think I got better at that because knowing that I'm the oldest in the group, I have to throw example. Usually here I'm, I'm making all routines and um, trying to make sure it fits the personality of the swimmer first and the skill level. I do a lot of mixing up of routines, especially when it comes to like duets and teams, sometimes solo. It's all I want to do, it's my life. I would love to be in the 2020 Olympic Games, doing my best, competing, hopefully to get a medal. Competing at the Olympics will make more Jamaicans know that synchronized swimming is actually in Jamaica. The magazine closes for today, but please visit our social media pages. We're just a click away. You may also download our app to be notified of our latest stories and features. Don't forget to give us a like or leave a comment on our pages. Until next time, I'm Adrian Atkinson. Do take care. This has been a production of the Jamaica Information Service the voice of Jamaica.